Hi, I'm Ash from Droning On. The sun is shining and it's flight test day for the King Kong Q90. In part one of our Q90 review, we unboxed and inspected this neat little brushless quad available from Gearbest for just over £100 or $140. It's now time to flight test it and we'll start with an indoor flight. Links to the products shown in this video are in the video description and be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm really used to flying brushed quadcopters around the house and so immediately I can feel the additional power that the Q90 has over brushed quads like the QX90C. The main benefit of course is that if you do drop in altitude you've got loads of power to recover whereas most of the brush models have a point of no return where you'll simply hit the floor. After a few high speed laps of the kitchen I head outside where the Q90 feels really solid. I then attempt to roll on the way back but discover that I don't seem to have full travel on aileron and so I end up crashing. I connect up to beta flight and find that my minimum and maximum end points on the transmitter are way off by around 70 points top and bottom. I can't solve this using subtrim and so I have to use the RX range command instead and what I've done is written up this process as a guide on droningon.co so that you can click the link in the top corner to read it. This might help some of you that have similar issues with your quads. So we've now tested the Q90 brushless indoors and realistically you don't need a brushless quadcopter when racing inside. Brushless is much better suited to outdoor environments and so we're now going to give it a try out here. It's a lovely day and the Q90 has the standard 350 milliamp battery attached to it ready for its test flight. It will be very interesting to see how the AC800 receiver performs which I attached to the Q90 in part 1 as I do suspect that the range will be limited. When first putting on my goggles I noticed that the image is slightly blurry and so I spend a short time turning the lens to get it perfect. But overall the picture quality from this tiny little camera is really good. The FOV isn't too big and the colours are really good too. Off we go with takeoff and I immediately forget that I'm flying a micro quadcopter because the Q90 handles really nicely. I'm in rate mode at the moment and the quadcopter feels really locked in with its factory pids although there is room for improvement. I'm really getting into this flight until those dreaded skinny invisible tree branches jump out in front of me. They're so hard to see but no damage is done and the Q90 is ready for its next flight. Next flight and I start with a bit of a punch and it's incredible just how quickly this Q90 gains altitude. A real nice change from flying the brush quads where the punch is generally not that great or impressive. The VTX is also brilliant considering it's just using a single monopole antenna. There is a tiny bit of breakup but nothing significant as I fly around this field. I attempt to roll and it handles it with ease. Excited by that I then try again and add in a small reverse loop followed by a second. There's no hesitation when putting the Q90 through its acrobatic paces and this quad is just an absolute pleasure to fly. But a slight glitch of interference through the AC800 receiver and unfortunately I'm sent to the ground. So far I've been flying the Q90 with the 350 milliamp battery that comes with it but I'm now just going to have a bit of an experiment and try flying it with the 850 milliamp battery. It's about twice the weight as you'd expect. You'd normally use this with the Rodeo 150, a brushless uh, quadcopter from Walkera but this thing's got so much power we're going to give it a try. Let's see how it flies. So I'm pretty shocked that the Q90 handles this much heavier battery pack with ease. Of course it's really important to ensure that the extra weight doesn't cause the ampage load to exceed the capacity of this setup. Also that the C rating of the battery that I've used is appropriate and I know that this battery is a 40C and so it should be good for about a continuous limit of around 35 amps. But carrying this extra weight the quad is actually even nicer to fly and faster straight line due to the additional weight. It now truly does feel like a larger quad although the punch and altitude recovery isn't as good as expected but it's still pretty impressive. I give it some close proximity flying around the trees which really tests this quad although my skills are not the best. But the quad is doing precisely what I'm asking for it and doing so nicely too at a far better speed with a bigger pack. 
Even loops and rolls are still possible with the larger battery and with ease. And I finished the session with some fast paced circles around me. Not particularly tidy flying, I will add, but this is my first flight with this brilliant little quadcopter. So we've now given the King Kong Q90 a good test indoors and out. Let's have a look at the summary of this awesome little brushless FPV quadcopter. It should have a four-in-one flight controller, power distribution board, receiver and speed controller so that there's more room free for the receiver installation. The speed controller wires on the ends of the arms are exposed and may be slightly vulnerable, although I had no issues during testing and crashing. The Q90 does not come with spare props, which is a real shame considering the price. And talking of price, although it is only around £100 or $130, that's still quite a lot for a mini quad without a receiver. Now onto the positives. The Q90 arrives with Betaflight already installed, which is great, and the factory PID tune is good and solid without tweaking. It has a really compact form factor and so it easily fits in the glove box of your car for flying whilst you're on the move. And it'll even fly with an 850mAh 2S pack, although I think that a 600mAh pack would be a good all-around compromise. And finally, the flight time is quite good too, at around 3-4 to four minutes with the standard 350mAh battery. Overall, the Q90 is a great quadcopter which, despite its size, flies with authority. The bloated nature of the design means that there isn't much room left for the receiver, but it isn't designed for long-range flight and therefore a microceiver like the AC800 that I used is more than adequate. I hope that you enjoyed this flight test review. Links to this quadcopter are in the video description. If you haven't seen part one yet, you can view it now by clicking on the video shown. And be sure to drop a comment below to let me have your thoughts. Give the video a thumbs up and please click subscribe. Thanks for watching.